munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to a Munchie Talk. In today's discussion, we are going to be diving into the world of Oxbow food, specifically hamster and gerbil formulas. Now the whole reason why I want to bring this up to you guys today is because nutrition is key, understanding is key, and you guys might be curious as to what we currently feed our hamsters and gerbils. I am not an expert and I base all my information off of the research I have done. Always do your research first before making a decision because you guys should be the judgment not me don't just rely your information on me I would highly recommend you guys go out and do your own research and come up with your own conclusions so before I get into this there's just a warning for you there but the reason I am getting into it today is because I got a very disturbing message on my foster home and rescues page that I would like to discuss with you guys today but for us personally we do not recommend oxbow pellets we used to use it but we do not anymore the reason for that will be coming up shortly, but I did want to share with you guys what the message was about. This message is from a past ex-adopter of our little boy from the 10 hamster litter I have yet to introduce you guys to, but for this case, it was Aladdin's adopter. So this is what she said. So I just want to make this clear. This is all public. So what I'm saying here, people can see this. It's not private or anything. So here I'm going to say what she said. Sad that so many rescues don't listen to the veterinarians. This diet is actively recommended by veterinarians. I'm a veterinary assistant and part of my job is to educate hamster owners on proper husbandry. This diet is recommended because seed diets directly lead to obesity, which causes the heart problems the hamsters are so prone to. This information is correct. I just want to make a note of that here. You should not only be giving up a seed, commercial seed diet, you should be providing veggies, you should be providing fruits in moderation. You should also be providing them a different protein source and or like Missouri lab blocks or a really high quality lab block because they should not just rely on seed mixes alone but there is a reason why oxbow has been so hated and debated about recently so let's continue pellets also don't allow the animal to pick and choose what parts they are eating that is also correct so that's why missouri is introduced to our food which we use the higgins sunburst brand if they aren't eating every seed or item in that mix they aren't getting all the vitamins advertised this is widely accepted knowledge among leading exotic veterans I adopted my hamster from you. Sadly, it seemed I will have to tell others not to adopt from here. Wow, okay, so I just want to make a note there that you're telling people not to adopt because we have different views on the food that we feed them. As a veterinary assistant, I would hope that people would be understanding with why we choose not to use Oxbow. Veterinarians, surprisingly enough, are partnered with Oxbow. They have a partnership. They are sponsored by Oxbow. Um, I know that we do um, feed Oxbow to all of our hospitalized patients, so if that tells you how much we like it. So Oxbow is definitely what we recommend, and it's what we sell to our offices, but we see our borders. So Oxbow is definitely a brand that we like and we trust. They recommend the Oxbow feeds as opposed to the pellets. So saying that our care is wrong and then getting upset by it and then threatening us is something that I feel like is very childish. So I'll address that a little bit later. Super disappointed. If you are all interested in receiving our up-to-date care sheets about hamster diet, I would be happy to give them to you. But unfortunately, this doesn't look great for you guys. I wish some real research had been done here. Okay, and the other information was veterinarians don't become veterinarians because they care more about money than making sure their patients receive proper care. So the whole argument about it being pushed commercially in vet offices is offensive to the veterinary industry. You guys have a partnership with them. That's why it's being pushed everywhere I go. Even my vets currently right now are partnered with Oxbow. I actually had a discussion with them while I was down there last time and they said that they're not going to push Oxbow down my throat and if I did my research then that's great but they don't forcefully do that to you. But maybe some places do. Notice that these infographics always look homemade because they are not a professional source and there are scientific journals supporting pellet diets. The hamster breeder in question might not be a graphic designer. They might not be the best. So complaining about their work even though they provide information, that is a little bit of a low ball move right there saying, oh, guess what? You're not as fancy. So that means you do not qualify to be listened to. That is a no-no. That is absolutely upsetting information to say that because your skills are lackluster, you are terrible. You should not be listened to. That's that's awful. 
awful. I just want to say that right there. They are the experts, not some cheap infographic from a Facebook page. Okay, so it is widely known in the hamster community and the hamster association that Oxbow is seen as not the greatest food source because of the low nutrition value, the low protein, and the too much high fiber in the diets, and hamsters in general not really liking the pellet formula and refusing to eat it, and other concerns. So the article originally was posted by Cheeks and Squeaks Hamsters. They are ethical breeders that I follow and pay attention to. They are part of the California Hamster Association that I follow, and hamster associations usually are partnered together. They are partnered with vets. They are partnered with specific brand of food, things like that. They actually try to work together. So all this comes about in this person's post about them explaining what experiences they've had with Oxbow and why they don't recommend it as hamster breeders, as people who are on these types of foods. So I feel like this post is very important to share with you guys because maybe it'll give you guys more of an understanding. So this is what they say. This is not what I say. I'll tell you my own personal opinion and experience with Oxbow. But it says here, uh, just a reminder to our members that Oxbow food for hamsters essentials or garden select is not appropriate for hamsters. Why? Several reasons. Nutritional analysis. Hamsters require the following in terms of nutrition. Protein 17 to 22%, fat 4 to 7, fiber 8 to 15. Essentials provides crude protein 15%, crude fat 4.5%, crude fiber 10%, crude fiber max 15. Garden provides crude protein 16, crude fat 2.5, crude fiber 18, and crude fiber max 23. Both are too low in protein and fat. The garden is extremely high in fiber. They both need additional foods to become nutritionally adequate. But second, the first ingredient in both is Timothy hay. Hamsters can digest Timothy hay, but it passes so quickly through the digestive tract that their body cannot absorb all the appropriate nutrients. So not only is the food by itself not nutritionally adequate, but it moves through the system so quickly, it's hard to know if the hamsters are even getting the guaranteed nutrition to begin with. Third, edited. Previously, versions were known to kill hamsters, especially young ones. A hamster club was sponsored by Oxbow, and many of them switched their hamsters, including nursing pups and mums, to the first version of Oxbow. The animals began losing condition, and many even died. Necropsy reports were performed, and it showed the hamsters starved to death. You have to literally pay the vets money to get this information found out, and breeders rely on making sure their pups are healthy, that their parents are healthy, that good breeding practices are performed. They do everything, so that's why this was performed, and they found out the hamsters starved to death. But that was on the first version of Oxbow. So let's continue reading. Since then, Oxbow reformulated to the Essentials formula and later the Garden Select. These new formulas were tested by Patability. While definitely better than Formula One, my personal experience with Oxbow Essentials matches others. My hamsters lose weight and condition and some will begin to lose fur. I have a comment about my personal experience with that, but I'll continue and tell you a little bit later. So here are some rebuttal questions. But it has good fiber. I can just use it to supplement. Well, I mean, you can, but why bother? Given what we know about its nutritional analysis and the speed of which it moves through the gut, why put something in the food that just offers fiber? There are loads of other foods that can offer extra fiber and nutritional benefits the hamsters gain from. Flax, oats, barley, beans, all of these things offer high amounts of fiber and protein and healthy fats and micronutrients. Why would you bother with something like Oxbow for fiber when you can add extras that will also increase the variety of your mix? But the vets recommended it. Oxbow has amazing foods for rats, guinea pigs, and rabbits. Many vet offices are sponsored by Oxbow and are specifically pushing it on customers. Also, vets are not nutritionalists. They are healthcare experts. This is also very true. They are not nutritionalists. Some might train in the field or do a little bit more research on it and actually send you to the correct place to go to while others are just basic general care. Just like I wouldn't go to my doctor to discuss changing my diet, I wouldn't go to the vet asking for nutritional information. But let's talk about my own personal experience. There is going to be two personal experiences I want to talk about. One being Hannibal, my Robo Roski that I got from PetSmart who was basically on Oxbow all of his life and we were recommended to use Oxbow by PetSmart just so that he gets what he needs and he is used to. And in the beginning when I first started to own hamsters again and doing a little bit of research, I was recommended solely on Oxbow being one of the best. And for a while I was saying, yeah, yeah, I use that. I would recommend it. But then what I noticed really shocked me. So I had Hannibal on the pellet mix. And unfortunately I started to notice that he wasn't looking as great as he should be. And so even though Hannibal at the time was very scared and skittish, I was still able to weigh him because I was a little bit concerned and I was just wanting to get some information down because I was starting to learn about hamster weight, weight loss, weight gain, 
trying to make sure that their overall health is good. Even though he was very young, I wanted to see him gaining weight. Unfortunately, he was not gaining weight and he was not eating his food and that worried me. So I was weighing the food to see if he took any food out of his bowl, what he kept in it, and it was really alarming. He was not eating the food in the record amount of time that he should be and I noticed his food was untouched. And so when I went to weigh him for the first couple times, he was at the same weight and then he started losing weight and I immediately went, oh, this isn't good. So I started mixing in a seed mix and even though at that time it wasn't the appropriate seed mix, I had that bag on hand. I got it for free and so I was like, okay, KTC mix, here you go. And he started eating and gaining weight again and that made me really happy because he was still a growing pup. Hamster babies are called pups, so that's why I say pup. But I was very concerned, so I completely cut that out, but I still mixed it into the seed mix. I just made the seed mix the main mix, as well as I added lab blocks in, and I usually use Missouri. There has been some times when I use the KT lab blocks, just because we've been donated KT lab blocks, and it's a lot easier to access them than Missouri, because sometimes they are completely out, or sometimes they are just super expensive, especially on Amazon. It just fluctuates so severely when it comes to buying food from there. But the next concern when it comes to Oxbow was my viewers were telling me, oh, this isn't that great of a food. And I was reassuring people, I'm just mixing in. It's just as an added benefit. And then people were telling me it doesn't really provide an added benefit. And so I looked a little bit further into it and I found out, oh my gosh, this research I'm looking up says that this is really bad. And what I just told you today, that was the research I looked up and I was very scared. And so I was like, okay, we are not gonna be using Oxbow. We'll take in donations for Oxbow if they are surrendered to us with the hamster, but we won't be personally using that as a main source because we use fruits and vegetables, we use the Missouri blocks, as well as the Sunburst Higgins mix and the Vita Garden. So the next thing is when we intook Babe a second time when he was adopted out and then returned to us four months later, we were given a bag of Oxbow. We were told that the main diet was just Higgins Sunburst, but they didn't have it at that time and handed us a bag of Oxbow. So I was looking at Oxbow and I was looking at the condition Babe was in. He lost his fur, his coat fur was awful, and he lost a lot of weight. He was 179 and I believe the lowest weight I weighed him at during the time of trying to get him back up to good health was about 154 grams versus the 179 he should have been at. In four months he deteriorated. So it got me questioning what is internally wrong with him and could it be the food? Like we said, we talked to the woman who had Babe for that four months and she said to us that she did didn't feed that as the main food. It makes us very skeptical sometimes because we don't really know if they're trying to be nice but hide it or if they're being completely honest. So that's one concern we had that could have been the food. And then we found out that he possibly had a URI, upper respiratory infection, took him in, got him on antibiotics, and he started to act a lot better and he started to look a lot better when it comes to activity level. But the moment I noticed that we intook Babe, his activity levels were down. But I didn't see the vet until about a week and a half to two weeks later because of scheduling. It's really hard to get into my exotic vets unless you book ahead of time. And so I noticed his energy levels were perking up instantly when I received him after a couple days of him being here and he was on Higgins. So honestly, I don't really know if the upper respiratory infection could have caused a horrible weight loss and a horrible fur condition. But thankfully, I have great news. Babe is back to his fluffy self again. I am super happy because it took us the longest time. It has been about a month and a half, I believe, since we got Bay back and his fur has returned and his weight, he's regaining weight. It's incredible. So that is something I want to just at least say to you guys could have been a possibility because we did receive the Oxbow food pellets, but we cannot be a hundred percent sure. So with that being said, I don't really recommend Oxbow. I've done my research. So what upsets me here is personal attack on the rescue. We personally have not done anything wrong to offend the person. We realize that they are a vet tech, but vet tech should also understand that not everybody is going to have the same care and or setup. So what's more upsetting about this vet coming at us like this is it jeopardizes rescues and operations that my rescue runs. I pay out of pocket my money for vet bills. I pay out of pocket for the care, the cages, unless things have been donated on the wish list. There has been donations that have helped us, but I basically basically pay everything. I spend my gas money to go rescue these guys. I can travel anywhere from 20 to 40 miles getting a hamster and doing the same thing.
thing for adopting them out. Each hamster gets adopted out for around five to eight dollars and that just typically pays us for the gas money that gets us to and from the place of adoption. So personally, for what that vet tech left on our page, I feel like it is wrong to try to degrade a rescue who is trying to make the effort to get these guys good homes and to adopt them out. Not recommending this place is a jeopardizing all these hamsters in their care from not finding homes. Right now, we currently have 17 animals in our care. And those 17 animals, if you're like, oh yeah, I don't like Munchie's place because she didn't recommend Oxbow, so yeah, don't go there. It, it really jeopardizes them and it makes them stay here longer. It doesn't get them seen by the right people. So with what the vet tech said to us, I feel like it was very personal and a very personal attack because I feel like for veterinarians and for rescues and breeders and associations, we should all be working together to understand. We can have debates, but we should not be threatening each other here. That is horrible. You're welcome to have a different opinion about the Oxbow. We just say we don't recommend it. We, we say because we've done our research and we've looked into it further and we see what the hamster breeders and associations have said to us. And we don't fully always go to them all the time. We look at different forums. We look at what people have personal experiences with and we go off of that information. So with what my community online has said to me, Oxbow, they haven't really used. They've used it for rats, guinea pigs. Well, rats, it's still a debate. I hear a few people saying rat food uh, from Oxbow isn't that great, but I don't personally own rats. I hear it's better for mouse owners out there, but not so great for uh, rats. I've heard that the guinea pig formula, guinea pigs won't eat it. And I hear some people saying it's wonderful. Their guinea pigs love it. As for rabbits, I haven't really heard much about their formula, but I feel like that was not okay for the vet tech to do, to say that, hey, we're not gonna support you even though you're rescuing all these guys from situations of homelessness, of neglect. I've actually put my money down trying to rescue these guys. And for someone to just say, hey, we're not gonna support that because of your choice in what you recommend. I mean, I guess it's fair game. So if it's fair game, I do not recommend the Center for Bird and Exotic Animal Medicine up in Bothell. I do not recommend this vet because I feel like it's not a loving community. If a vet assistant has to go and make this public that they will not support us because of our choice in what we feed our animals, I am sorry, I am going to not recommend you guys anymore. And I feel terrible because I've recommended you guys for the last two months. There has been hamster owners when I go to adopt out the hamsters that ask me what are good vets around them that they can go to. And the Bothell Clinic is a great place that I said in the past for emergencies and for people to be there all the time so they can assist in your pet. And now I'm not gonna do that. I am going to take you completely out of my list. And I actually have a website that I've been building up so you are completely gonna be removed from there. I am sorry, I am not gonna support someone who decides they're not gonna support rescue efforts just because of an opinion and just because of a recommendation. So there, I am saying that. So sorry about that. If you guys change in the future, or if anything changes, I'll bring you back into my recommendation list. I will let people know. Otherwise, I am not recommending you. I'm not recommending a few others for their practices because there has been some bad experiences at some of my exotic vets I've gone to before. I am putting you in that corner. Just want to say that. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like I said before, please go and do your own research out there. Determine whether or not you want to be using to supplement as main food, etc, etc. And if you liked the video, hit like to show your support. Comment down below with anything you would like to say regarding this topic here. And subscribe if you're new here and would like to see more content from me in the future and become a part of the Munchkin family. And look for updates on Instagram because that's where we post the most often of our foster home and rescue. So see you guys around and thank you so much. Bye bye!